first classical piece I want to talk about this week is the Mars and Jupiter Suite from Hulse the Planets. These are possibly the two best known pieces from the seven parts of the suite, and honestly, the entire work is well worth knowing. The opening to the Mars section is about as classic an adventure or suspense sound as you can find anywhere, and it's been used countless times throughout all areas of popular culture over the past decades. Written between 1914 and 1918, the piece only had a handful of performances before 1920, and almost all of those were in private settings. In November of 1920, it was finally given its public premiere, and since that time, it's remained one of the most popular and often performed pieces in the world. The concept that Holst was working throughout this piece was the idea that he wanted to capture the essence of the planets in their psyche, as opposed to working off of their Roman god names. Throughout this piece, you can hear clear influences from a number of different Russian composers. And while at first he felt that the percussion was actually too loud in this piece, since that time, it's become one of the trademarks of performances. There's an intensity that's shared between both of these pieces, but it's presented in two completely different ways. And that's the main reason that these two pieces are so closely tied together. Honestly, this is just one of those loud, powerful pieces of classical music that you can't help but enjoy. And you should really be able to identify it by name the moment you hear the first notes. The second classical piece I want to talk about is Paco Bell's Canon in D Major. Originally written in the late 1600s, this is one of hundreds of pieces that were pretty much completely forgotten until the early 1900s. And once it was revived, it quickly became one of the most popular works ever. The moment you hear the first notes of this, you will know exactly what it is, as it's still used all the time at weddings and graduations and similar celebrations. Yet in modern times, they tend to speed it up a bit from the original writing. Many historians speculate that this was originally written for the wedding of the eldest brother of Johann Sebastian Bach. But honestly, nobody knows how, when, where, or why this piece was written, as nearly every original copy was lost between the 17 and 1800s. As the piece rose to prominence during the first half of the last century, full orchestral versions were created, as well as versions for full Baroque pop audiences, and it's the latter that's become the most popular. Tons of bands from every genre, as well as hip-hop artists, have incorporated this progression into their music over the years. And it may very well be the most tampered with piece of music in all of history. It's just one of these classical works where while the origin is unknown, the impact is undeniable. And you really need to know this one by name. The final piece I'm gonna talk about is Orf's O Fortuna from the opera Carmina Burana. All right, when it comes to powerful music and classical music, honestly, it's impossible to top this one. And unless you've lived under a rock for your entire life, you've already heard this piece thousands of times. Seriously, the first two notes of this piece are impossible to mistake for anything else. And everything from movies to TV shows to professional sports teams have worked this in over the years. Written in 1935, this is actually based off of a 13th century Latin poem, as that poetic cycle is actually the source for the entire opera. While the vocal work that lies over this is absolutely iconic onto itself, the orchestra follows this powerful, amazing, shifting musical line. Like many pieces of the time, it's the presence and the overall volume of the percussion that really sets this piece aside. And the way that it juxtaposes the almost silent sections is nothing short of stunning. It's the slide and the sound of the orchestra that give the work so much intensity, and the massive sonic shifts are what makes this a true crowd favorite. The level of darkness and impending doom that you find on O Fortuna has never been equal. And they did a study that said in the last 75 years, in more than 50 countries, this has been the most popularly played piece in the world. At the same time, it's the short song length and the abrupt ending that really define this song, as it runs just over two and a half minutes of true sonic mastery. This piece really knows no equal, and while you're no doubt already familiar with it, you really should be able to identify it by name. The importance of classical music cannot be overstated as it continues to influence every single genre possible. So make sure you take some time this week and get your classical on. Oh!